are in listen-only mode. Welcome everyone to Admiral Market's educational webinar on this Thursday, 22nd. Twenty second of August, um, two thousand thirteen. We're going to take a look at counter trend trading. So this is a very uh, interesting topic, I think, and uh, I'm sure you're looking forward to that. As always, they're hosted by myself and Tarantula at Edmund Markets here. Please take a look at all these great things that we mentioned here, like for example, the spreads that Edmund Markets has. Definitely worth your time, but do that after our webinar, of course. We should always go through this risk disclaimer, so please be aware that trading for exchange uh, and financial markets in general is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please take the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And um, this webinar is for educational purposes only. So I thank you so much for your attention on that. All right, before we uh, head off to today's webinar, uh, I think Micha has some great words for us. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody, and good evening to those of you who are listening to us in the evening. Thank you very much, Chris, for a lovely introduction. I indeed have something I wanted to share with you. I wanted to cover a very important topic that I think all of us can agree on is one of the fundamental things you must consider when choosing a correct Forex broker. It's great to see all of you participating in this webinar. The number of for both live sessions and webinars has been on the rise. I think it's duly to for because of our great presenters, Nina and Chris. Uh, not only do we have participants that are currently trading with our markets, but we also have people who are yet to make their first trade, and traders, of course, who are currently with other brokers. And I extend my warmest regards to all of you. I hope you enjoyed the first part of Chris's introduction, and I'm pretty sure all of you are looking forward to learning new things. That brings me to the point I wanted to make. Why do we choose one broker over the other broker? This is very important. What sets one broker apart from the rest? There are a number of factors you must consider before you make this important decision. And more often than not, broker's rating is really really depends on, uh, most of the time it's, it's very difficult to make the correct decisions. You have to look at a lot of different things. You have to consider the spread, you have to consider deposit methods, a lot of instruments, variety of account types, and so on and so forth. You choose the factors most important to you and you make a decision. But of course, none of those factors matter if the key factor is missing. And I'm talking about, of trust. This is the most important factor one must consider when shooting the Forex broker. No matter how great the conditions are, it all means nothing if you do not trust the broker you are about to trade with. In fact, none of those factors even exist if you do not trust the broker who advertises them. Investment is walking on a tight rope and you must be sure that there is a reward waiting for you when you make it to the other side. If a broker with a dodgy reputation advertised one pip maximum spread, would you believe it? I don't think so. No would be a correct answer. Most likely the spreads are higher. And even if they were that low, you would not probably be able to withdraw your profits, for instance. So you see the trust is the main factor, the most important criteria there is. Trust has, of course, been a critical issue for the past few years, especially in the financial sector. And if you would never buy a product from eBay, if, say, the seller had less than 100% positive feedback, why would you settle for less when it comes to Forex broker? After all, you entrust your broker with substantial funds, and the level of trust should also be quite substantial. So how do you choose a trustworthy broker? As most of you have probably heard or probably noticed, there is not a single place on the internet that will represent, will present you 100% accurate data. And more, often, and more often than not, broker ratings really depend on the amount of money that broker is willing to pay to the website. So here are a few things to look at when you consider trading with one of the brokers. First of all, 
in the financial world, there is always someone watching. In this case, I'm talking about the regulators. In order to receive your license, you must comply, comply with strict regulations. And more regulators you allow to watch you closely, more secure you are. Admiral Marcus, for example, is licensed by European Union, uh, by EFCA, and has obtained a passport from MIFID. Admiral Marcus has recently received an FCA license in UK and has been licensed by Australian Financial Service License and Authority. Being licensed, of course, is important. But Admiral Marcus is not only the broker that is highly regulated, but it's also an organization that tries to establish a personal relationship with the customer. We focus on customer service. This is just like you would expect from your local butcher or hairdresser, personal and friendly. This is how, this is the size of Admiral Markets. We are huge organizations. We have offices in 35 countries and we're opening new offices almost every month. But this is what I would expect our customer service to be like, to be local, to be tailored to your specific needs. You will always have a person on the other end of the line who will help you and who will be able to advise you on the best practices, who will be able to advise you on your special conditions. In the first Facebook era, we at Admiral Marcus decided to go further. Rather than just sharing a transaction, we want to establish a personal relationship with our clients. Our policy is to provide a personal account manager to each of our customers. If you have a real account with us, if you have a demo account or you participated in Ford's Bowl, there is a person in our company that can help you out in your own language. Not a member of a support team, an actual person that is responsible for your account from the time you registered in the company to the time you decide to, say, withdraw all your winnings. In that sense, our size is like this and our customer service is like this. I'm, for instance, I'm a great example of this. I think that in the Facebook era, it's very important to personally know your account manager. Bef uh, anybody can go online and uh, add me on Skype or LinkedIn, and I'll be very happy to help those people when they have some problems or just want a friendly chat. So once we have established your trust, once we have won it, we would like your business only after that. So register an account with us, and you will be able to have a chat with your account manager at all times. So once you do, you will find out that our spread of major pairs is as low as one pip. We offer MetaTrader 4 and 5. We accept bank wire payments, card payments, and Skrill. We give you a variety of accounts to choose from, from standard to professional, all sorts of managed accounts, and a special CFD account as well. You can register an account today once you have participated in this webinar and meet your personal account manager in just a few hours. To him, you will always be a number one most important client. If you have any questions, please write me an email, Skype me or call me. If you want to add me on LinkedIn, I will gladly accept your invitation. I hope you had a great time listening to this presentation. I will now be passing the microphone to Nanat and Chris and they will take you to on a great trip to the wonderful world may uh, call Forex Trading. Thank you very much for your attention. It's been great. Enjoy the day uh, remaining of the webinar. Thank you so much, Mikhail. Great stuff. And uh, really, truly appreciate those words. Now we're going to take a look at counter trend trading. And uh, I'm going to uh, show you my screen. Guys, do you, hear, do you hear me? Yes, we do. Well, OK, now it's OK. Or we can check I in with the, the audience as well. Check on. OK. Yes. Yes, we got some confirmation there. That's good. Uh, Mikhail? I think you just have to make uh, me presenter again. Ah, there it is. Alrighty, so today's goal, how traders can trade counter trend. Okay, so we're going to take a look at what is counter trend first of all. When uh, do you want to maybe avoid it and when do you want to trade it? The advantages and disadvantages of this type of trading maybe the best time of, for this trading, the early versus late entry, and also maybe regarding the entries and exits, bollinger bands and candlestick patterns, amongst other things. So 
got a lot of good stuff going on um, today and this hour. So hang in there and sit tight, grab some coffee. We've got a lot to discuss. So when do we actually apply counter and counter trend trading? I just wanted to talk a few words here about, of course, the fact that if we're talking about counter trend trading, it's, uh, it's quite logical in a way, but we're in fact assuming there is a trend because we're trading against that. So this is not range trading or uh, anything like that. There has to be a trend in place and we're in fact trading it against that trend. It's trading a reversal counter that momentum. Uh, now in this case when we're actually want to take a counter trend trade, we're in fact assessing the likelihood of a bigger retrace or a total reversal. Because only in those cases is it really profitable. If, if we think there's just going to be a small retrace uh, and we see, for example, something like this, a big uptrend, a small down move and a continuation, most likely trading this part to the downside uh, will not be profitable and it will be probably a loss that you get there. It's not worth our energy, our time, our risk, our capital, our focus. Uh, and in fact, we should probably most likely not trade it or focus on trying to catch it here for that upside. Now if we expect more uh, bigger retracements or total reversals, that of course is worth it. Now, How can you spot the difference you might be asking? That's something we're going to dive into uh, in this webinar. But that's just, just a basic understanding of what counter trend trading is. But we're going to dive into that more here with uh, T. Yes, we can. Well, well, as you said, Chris, first, before we start to counter trade, we need to assume that the trend is in place. So today, for example, was a great opportunity for all counter trend traders to go for Aussie or for Euro dollar, for example, around the, the 3300. And effectively, by counter training, trading, we are trading against probably the, the biggest, the, the most of retail traders. Uh, uh, as I heard, maybe, I think it was a year ago, a friend from a hedge fund told me that most of professional traders trade uh, versus trend. And I have seen one of them in action. He almost made a hundred percent in a, well, in a month then. Well, in, and then in a, in a trade, he lost almost seventy percent. So when trading counter trend, trend trade, Trace, this is very, that is very, very uh, picky. So we need to know where is the trend, on uh, what time frame, and especially we need to use indicators. It's very hard to counter trend trades without any, any indicators, be it only a horizontal levels of support, resistance, candlesticks, or at least, at least Bollinger Bands. So uh, mostly, uh, Counter trade trading requires good support and resistance. It requires divergence and or candlestick pattern. That is what I use for uh, for counter to trading. I will show you later my charts and how I usually do it. And uh, I personally like to to spot the trend on four hour on one hour time frame, and then I switch into lower time frame. As always, multiple time frame analysis gets in place. Counter trend trading is uh, I can say it's a lot harder than trend trading. When we have a trend, we can exploit breakouts. Breakouts can be the most profitable uh, if we know how to do it. Uh, longing into daily highs after the break or into the daily lows after the break can be a really, really profitable if we want to have a leverage and a slightly leverage trade. Uh, if we go counter trend, we can, uh, we can get some um, maybe above average leverage because the risk is smaller. But yet again, it's what if, if there is only a retracement and that counter trend gives us only 10 pips of profit, then we are probably need to reverse the trade because it will resume going in the trend direction. So we need to use uh, some indicators. Some use Arun, some use RSI, uh, Bollinger Bands. Well, it depends on your trading style. Counter trade training is uh, diversification and risk reduction strategy. That means that you need to have a knowledge of the markets. Counter trade trading isn't suitable for traders who start to trade. It's only suitable for, for traders who have some, well, who have at least 
above average experience in forex market. It's a more difficult to counter trend, it's advanced method of trading, it's diversified trading, it gives you another weapon, it gives you another edge in trading, it, uh, it uh, has a lower risk than trend, but also it can be a very, very risky if you don't know when and where to apply it. Counter trade trading also in, uh, in forex speech is called fading, it's, it's called fading the move. So when we are gonna when we when we take for example uh, counter trade trade near the resistance, we call it fading the strength. If we uh, if we are if we want to long into support, we call it fading into support or fading into weakness. Mostly, mm, I can say from my experience that, uh, and that is I think that is a fact also. Uh, it's very it's much easier to long into support than it's to short into resistance. I don't know why is that so, but mostly counter trade trades I are better if we long into support than if we short into resistance. Also, we can see that today is also uh, is also that kind of day. 3300 it's a big support on euro and you see how it, it went 70 pips after the USD news. Well, if some of you traded the second swing, uh, it would be short trade. It would have been short trade around 3345, but that trade yelled only, only 20 pips. I got some 15 pips from that trade. But uh, to be honest, it, it, it was very, it was much better to long into support. So counter trade trading is fading into the move and it's mostly done by longing into support. It's okay if we go, if we fade the resistance, but 70% of the time it's, it's much better to long into support than, than short into resistance. But of course, if we are counter trending, we need to know also when to short it, not just long it. So next slide is, I will say a few things about counter trade training, which is also have some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, one, I can say that is, that is maybe, for me maybe that is a disadvantage, but for some of traders who want to trade medium term, it's advantage. It goes versus trend, so it does not rely on momentum. That means that if you want to trade breakout, it's impossible to trade with counter trend strategies. We only pick supports and resistance. We don't go into retracements. We don't want to, we, we are not interested in any sort of retracements or breakouts. We go, we fade the move. So it does not rely on momentum. If we want to exploit breakouts, as I do, well, it's impossible with counter trend. It's harder to calculate the right timing. Sometimes indicators and candlestick patterns can help us. But also, if a trend is very strong, especially on higher time frames, it's hard to calcul calculate the right level for shorting. Some of you might say that 3350 is a good resistance. Well, it was a good resistance, but you know, it, it was very, how can I say, picky that we, we that we can short just into 33.50. So re, let's say that we have shorted into 33.35. That means that we have some 20 pips of of a stop of a stop loss. And uh, by doing counter trend today, well, that means shorting into resistance. We wouldn't have got much profits. So we need to calculate the right timing. It's the most important when counter trend, when we go counter trend, the right timing. It requires higher time frame analysis, so it's harder for inexperienced traders. Inexperienced traders are very, very, are, are in disadvantage. I can say that for a list. It, it's very, very, uh, uncommon for uh, newbie traders to make money with counter trend trading. So it's only meant for experienced traders. It also requires knowledge of divergence. We need to know what the div divergence is. 
if you have followed our webinars you could have seen that we uh, well most of the time we use divergence for counter trend trades or for exits sometimes it can be a sign of continuation when, they, when it's a hidden divergence but usually when it's a regular divergence normal divergence we go counter trend I will show you later examples how I do it it can be profitable also of course because we have a low risk we are going short into resistance or we are going long into support so the stops are small they are relatively small we can trade with 15 pip stop and for trend trades it's a bit we need a bit higher stop loss if the trend if if it's caught in the right moment it's much more profitable than a trend strategy why because again we don't wait for retracements we don't go we can go after the move has started but the, the best counter -trend trades are at the beginning of a new trend so if caught in the right moment it's much more profitable than a trend strategy I got a good trade today Aussie I got into Aussie around 88 85 I think and it was a good it was bottom and my stop was 13 pips only 13 pips so uh, that is that can be very profitable and much more profitable than a trend strategy because we are getting early into the, the trend into the, the trade again statistics says that bottoms are easier to pick than tops as I said for me also the bottoms are easier to pick I don't know the reason why is that because markets are maybe naturally bearish so maybe that is why bottoms are easier to pick than tops in, in nature markets forex market and all markets are bearish that is the nature of the markets that is that is the law of the markets so according to the statistic it's easier to pick bottoms than tops also as I said in my case contrarian traders never trade breakouts they only trade tops and bottoms so that is what I was telling you we never trade breakouts so uh, most tra traders with probably a knowledge that trading in the direction of the longer term trend is the higher probability way of trading but well uh, you know generally speaking after a currency pair has made a strong move over an extending period of time in one direction a retracement is likely to take place as we all know the stronger and longer the move is in the direction of the trend is the stronger is the pull back so we are gonna take that pull back which can later become a trend so that is counter trend strategy so after each strong move in the direction of the trend there is always a retracement or consolidation fading the move means that the trader will wait for the move to the upside or downside to stall so this stall may take place at levels of support resistance Bollinger Bands or uh, let's say a FIB level because we are using a price we need to see historical price data and that is when experience gets, gets in place we need to see if there was substantial buying or selling uh, before so when we are taking for example a trade and we want to see a counter trade and we are taking a counter trade we need to see if there was a historical buying or selling if there was a historical buying or selling of that particular level if there was not a particular there was not buying or selling we don't see any buyers or sellers we don't take the trade we wait for the trend to resume or if we go counter trend for the next support or for the next resistance so as I say it's hard to master and it really depends on historical data so it's not suitable for new traders because new traders will surely lose money if go counter trend absolutely Keith. definitely not advisable you, you need the experience you need to know when to apply it and uh, what formations you to look for how to incorporate all those different levels how to uh, interpret that and put it into a plan and also stick to that plan because 
uh, you need to get that reward to risk out of that those counter trends to compensate some of that risk. Um, so definitely, only when you have more experience, when you when you succeed in in other strategies and you're doing well with that, then you can expand uh, your operations. So, as you as you know, Chris, uh, maybe uh, two days ago, three days ago, um, a student of mine, ex student of mine, asked me a question. Uh, when do I expect cable to reverse? And I said I would short it around 57.00. So you see what happened? Uh, it went 150 pips down. Also 35.50, 35 no 15, 35.50, 34.50. Sorry. Uh, most of traders, uh, most of traders uh, thought probably that it will break 34.50 and go to 35. And I said in my analysis, if you follow it also that uh, we will likely see 32.75. So that is because uh, when we have a big trend taking place, uh, the retracement is usually deeper. So we will see if this is a beginning of new trend, that means bearish trend, or this is just a, a deeper retracement on higher time frame. So well, it depends also on fundamental analysis and so. But, uh, uh, whatever it may be, we need always, always to see the levels. That is why I all, always, in my analysis, say if it goes above that level, the price will go there. If it, if it goes below that level, the price will go there. So it's the safest way to trade. If you see the level and you see the pattern on, you see some indicator that will signal you a continuation or reversal, you want to exploit that. So that is why I always watch the levels prior to making any trades. I want to see my red lines. I really prefer my red lines. You will see in our examples how I do it. You will see my red lines. Those are manually, uh, manually drawn levels of support and resistance. And I want to see price action around those levels. Of course, I, don't never, tra I never trade without Bollinger Bands. Counter trade trading for me is a sa sa much safer if I use Bollinger Bands. They're perfect for counter trend trading. Great stuff. Yeah, Mr. John Bollinger also witnessed that in, in some of his books. He also wrote that Bollinger Bands are very, very good way to go contrarian. Absolutely. Yeah. No, T, you're totally right. You, the only thing you can do is really look at levels and um, take that level, plan it as best as you can, and and go for it. And uh, not, not really aiming for any, uh, as you said, any any retracements or breakouts. That's all it has to do with other types of trading. Absolutely. Exactly. Uh, I wanted to dive into a few questions. Uh, some traders might have noticed are not that keen on looking if um, if there is a trend or not, then I could identify two groups. One, person, one group is that just starting out and they don't look at trends at all. Well, in that case, I would definitely uh, warn you because it, it's very useful to identify which side of the market is with the stream and which side of the market is not with the stream because basically the picture yourself uh, swimming against the current of the uh, ocean or sea that's a lot tougher. And going with that flow is a lot easier. So if you know which direction the river is flowing, very useful as a swimmer. So we traders are swimmers as well, so it's, it's good to know the current direction. Uh, now, some others don't use trends that much because they have reached a certain experience where, they, um, where they're trading basically scalping from one side to another, and they take maybe five trades in a day on both sides of the market. So that is a totally different level again. That's when you have a lot of experience. Um, but don't do that until you have reached years of profitability, OK? Um, now, definitely trend is useful, the definition. But you need to know what is your definition of that. Uh, if, you, if you know that you, if the trend is important, that's good. But how do you define it? What are you looking for? What time frames? What do you define as a trend? Or what do you define as a range? What is counter trend? and all that. So that's quite important. So we'll dive into that. Um, now this definition does 
vary depending on the trader. For example, uh, it, you could choose one hour. I could be looking at a four hour. We could be using different tools for that and different methods. So that does vary from trader to trader. I'll give you my view on that in just a second. And uh, well, we talked about if counter trend makes sense or not. Actually, T dived into that uh, very nicely. So we'll skip that for the moment. So this is just an example of, uh, of where we have a four hour just recently, of course, on the euro dollar and uh, where we have an uptrend in place. You can see the green circles confirming those higher highs and higher lows. And the purple on the left where we had lower lows and lower highs. And when we broke the red vertical uh, horizontal line with that massive impulse on the FOMC announcement in July, we changed gears. And um, we've only had really two hiccups more or less, well first of all we had here, we had a lower high, so it was like a triangle, we broke the triangle to the upside though and we continue with the higher highs and higher lows. The first sign of basically um, a, lower, a lower high was, a lower low, excuse me, was here, we have the red circle. That does not necessarily mean that in that case the trend is over in my opinion, okay? We have key levels here, key support levels, broken tops, but it does mean that this level becomes very important. But if we then continue with higher highs, we're still back in the uptrend. So it's just a caution. In this case, we did push through a bit because we had here, we had lower lows, lower highs, and then again a lower low. Uh, so that was a bit of a toss up here, but then we continued with higher highs as well. Um, not sure when this was, this was Monday. I think we pushed up a bit after that and now have fallen, if I remember correctly. Um, so here, what I, what I would suggest is, is this, very simple, put a 20 and a 40 EMA on your chart and, if, if, and a fractal. And the only thing you need to do is basically see if the 20 is above the 40 and if the fractal hits the 40 EMA, that is the last kind of key support level you want to look at. If that's broken, then we're probably ranging or reversing. If you have a fractal that's way above the 40 EMA, it could be a support level, but it's not a key support level. Okay, it's a support level, but even if we would make a one lower around here, that would be the real critical one. So if we, even if we break this lower or higher uh, low and break it to the downside, if we bounce off the higher moving average, I would consider that one the key. So that's just one way of looking at the trend. I'm sure there are uh, dozens and maybe thousands and millions of other ways, but you can see that's just a neat way of capturing price with a moving average instead of a trend line and knowing what the trend is on this four hour chart. Now whether you consider the trend, this is 20 and 40 EMA close. 20 and 40, okay, close. Now will it always be so neat necessarily? No, there are definitely you're going to see examples where the these moving averages are going sideways and the price is bouncing around them. But that also gives us information. That provides us the information that in fact this currency pair is in a range, right? If there's no angle on these EMAs, we're in a range bound uh, environment on that particular time frame. Now in these two cases, the up and downside and accordingly the upside after that, we had on this time frame trends to up, down and then up. Andre is asking if other EMAs are okay as well. He's asking about 8 and 20. Um, it's all about what you feel comfortable and what you've tested as well. In theory, all EMAs will work, um, or maybe not a thousand, wouldn't be that, probably that useful, but you, you know what I mean, within the normal range. As long as you know what to do with that information, then that's fine. 20 is a bit, uh, is a bit faster, as you can see. It hugs the pri price closer. I use 40 just because sometimes we get a bigger retracement uh, and we get a spike to that level and I know it's still a, a resistance or support, but okay. Now the time frame definitely depends what type of trader you are and what kind of style you like and what trading style you like. A, sc a scalper might, use, for example, use a one hour chart as a trend definition. An intraday trader uh, would use, for example, one, a combination maybe of one or four hour depending. Intra-week trade, swing trader would probably use four hours uh, charts. Intra-month swing would use day charts 
as a definition. I'm talking about time frames for trend definition. So what on what time frame are we looking at defining the trend? That doesn't necessarily mean we enter on that time frame. That could be one time frame lower or two. A scalper might use a five minute chart to enter, but we'll use a couple of time frames higher for the trend. The intraday trader uses maybe the four hour as a trend definition, but enters on a 15 or one hour. The intra week uses four hour, but then enters on a week. Well, uh, one hour, sorry. The interest month swing uses day but enters on the four hour. And the position traders that keep the currency maybe for up to from one week to maybe months use day and week charts for their trend definition. So that's just to give you an idea what kind of time frames you're looking at. Okay, so I as you said as you can see I use the four hour chart. I like the four hour chart for for trend definition personally. Uh, 50 EMA is also probably very similar to 40 uh, indeed. Alrighty, let's take a look at the early entries and late entries. So I don't know if uh, T you want to add anything regarding the, the previous by the way? Uh -huh. uh, it seems that T has been muted. Let me try to Give me one second, folks, okay? I'll try to uh, see if I can unmute him somehow. Sorry for that delay. No, I don't see... I'm trying to look for options how to unmute our, our friend. <laughs> uh, let's see, maybe I can do it here, actually. Yeah, does that... No, it's okay. Work, it's yeah. Okay. Now, okay. because uh, it it was we needed to press together. I press it, but without organizer help, I couldn't do anything. So, okay. what was about? What was it about? Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, early entry versus late entry. Okay, early entry is the most profitable, but its success ratio is not as high as late entry. Why is that? So it's because it's it's the only one thing. Because trends uh, have more momentum, more tick volume, more money into it, and uh, more traders behind it than counter trend trades. So, trend trades are are much much stronger than than counter trend trades. So, early entry can be the most profitable if you know when to pick pick it, but its success ratio is not as high as late entry. If, for example, if we if we had shorted into 3450, we we would have gotten into the earliest entry po possible. But let's say that we have shorted a 3370 or 60 or 80. Well, you see, the the the, the success is not not that high. For example, we if we go for full price extension, we would have been stopped on break even, or we maybe only got some 20 pips of profit. So basically, it's not the, the high as, as uh, late entry. Late entry success ratio is higher, but early entry is more profitable. So if you got into late entry, it's, it's, uh, well, that means that we have a confirmation. Uh, confirmation is 50% of the job. But, uh, well, profits is not. Profits is not. Uh, mostly profits are uh, less than uh, early entry. That's because we don't use any divergence. That's because trend uh, counter trend has already in place, has already started. So we need to be very careful about money management. Then early entry is done by divergence analysis and trend exhaustion or candlestick pattern. So if we use divergence, we need to spot divergence very close to 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 support or resistance. Or if we and then we go in the trade by trading the divergence. Uh, Chris and I had a webinar about it, trading the divergence. So if you can follow it, you already know how to enter the trade by divergence. Also, uh, trend exhaustion, there is a set of patterns that uh, gives give us a trend, trend exhaustion pattern. Now it's not the time for that, maybe we will have it in one of our next webinar. But uh, uh, to be honest, guys, uh, divergence is, is Maybe it's it's really it's the best for for placing counter trade trades. 
also candlestick patterns can help us so we can have some confluence of divergence and candlestick patterns. So it can give us uh, an early entry. Late entry is done by a breakout of chart pattern or W pattern. That means that the W pattern, as we all know, it's one to three reversal pattern. We go when the uh, second point of W pattern is broken, so there is a breakout trade, or we have some chart pattern. Let's say we have a triangle and we have a breakout of the triangle, or we have a rectangle of uh, head and shoulders. That is all late entry, and that means that uh, the, the counter trend has already started. As we know, head and shoulder is a bearish reversal. It, it happens in uptrends. Inverse, in reverse head and shoulders is a bullish sign, and it goes in. It happens in downtrend. So it can be a breakout, or it can be a chart pattern, or W pattern, of course. So there are, there are the advantages and disadvantages of early entry and late entries. And now, yeah, the slide. This is one of the examples how you can trade Bollinger Bands and candlestick patterns. Of course, uh, you, know, you need to know the candlesticks, but uh, for this kind of strategy, we use pin bars only. Pin bars are great when they happen close to big supports and uh, resistance. Uh, uh, don't mind uh, uh, to the left side is it was my position when I took the screenshot for t from today it was my position it was a sell around 33 uh, 43 I got some I think it was 18 pips of, of this trade so I was I was taking a screenshot while I was trading so it doesn't matter it's a good example so these are of course levels which are manually draw always and they are always on my charts so this is not an indicator. The only indicator on this chart is is Bollinger Bands. So, I want to see I want to see a, a, a inverted hammer or hammer. I, in this first example, I want to see a hammer and I want to see a pin bar. This is a hammer and this is a pin bar. It it was uh, the the price on one hour time frame was rejected of the 3275 support, but the rejection was after. Uh, it was sorry. It was before the candle closed in Bollinger Band territory. So I first want to see the candle outside the Bollinger Bands. Then, then I want to see pin bar close into the Bollinger Bands, and of the support. And you see that the price went afterwards into went some 40 pips prior to to a move down. So I, I exploited a counter trend trade around 32.75, and this is the first example. So the, you need to you want to see a hammer or a pin bar, but first you want to see it outside the Bollinger Bands. Then it needs to close inside the Bollinger Bands and of the big support. Then again, a good example of 32.55 rejection. You see, we had a candle close into the Bollinger Bands after it penetrated the Bollinger Bands to the downside. So it was the penetration outside the Bollinger Bands, then it was a pin bar and a big hammer into the Bollinger Bands of the 3225. So it's a bit, maybe it's a bit of late entry, but it's not that late. I, I couldn't have picked the 3225 because I needed some confirmation. And, uh, well, if you see, if you want to see the reaction, you see I haven't exploited, of course, the full trade because I trade intraday, but this trade was afterwards good for some 150 pips. You see how the price respected 33.80 to the pip after it reversed of 32.25. So that, those are my red levels. They are really perfect. Yet again, 33.80. You see the third arrow. The third arrow is again pin bar into the Bollinger Band close after it penetrated and bounced off the 3380. So I want to see the, the uh, first uh, the candle outside of Bollinger Bands. Then I want to see a pin bar close into the Bollinger Bands of the important red level. And then after it was it it has been done. You see the 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 trade could have been placed around 33.60 and it was good for some 60 pips. 
Again, fourth candle, fourth arrow, it's again a sort of, of a, well, it's a sort of a tweezers pattern. So we have a bullish breakout of the, of the Bollinger Bands, but then we have rejection of the 30, 34, 40, like tweezers. So it's a tweezer stop and it's again closed into the Bollinger Bands. So tweezers outside and then inside close after the price was rejected of the 3440 important red level. So you see th those are one of the strategies I prefer when trading counter trend. I want to see my red levels, I want to see Bollinger Bands and I, and I want to see at least 50 pips on one hour time frame for, from support and resistance levels. So I want to see a drop in the first arrow. If you, if you see, if you watch the first arrow, we see that the drop was around 100 and uh, 110 pips, and it qualifies for the trade because there is at least 50 pips difference from the support and resistance when we want to go counter trend. So there is a first Bollinger Bands and candlestick pattern strategy. So it's not that hard. We want to see a reversal of the support preferably pin bar and into the Bollinger Bands territory. This example is also Bollinger Bands and candlestick patterns with divergence. We need to see the divergence, of course. The divergence on four hour time frame, preferably because four hours intraday and intraweek trading time frame. The first thing here is I want to see a clear trend. I don't want to see any hidden divergence. Hidden divergence means continuation of the trend. If you know divergence, you should know it by now. The regular or normal divergence is a reversal. So I want to see a drop on four hour time frame, at least 50 pips, but because it's four hour, I prefer it to be more. Then you see the first example, a regular divergence we can see that the price is making lower highs and oscillator is made a higher low, so that is a regular divergence of the 20, you see 27.96, it was a good example. You see how the price reacted, it went, well it went pretty pretty far, so around 400 pips. Then I want to see again a regular divergence and the next, next regular divergence we can see it that the price was almost rejected of the 3380. It was 3358, 59, where regular divergence appeared, and we see how it was good for shorts. So that is one way of that is another way of trading divergence. I prefer the first way, but this also can give me a good signal to get into an earliest entry possible after the divergence. You know how we trade the divergence, so you know how you can enter the counter trend by using a divergence. But as always, you need to know those levels. You, know, you need to know the important levels. I prefer my levels over indicators. So don't mind those red lines, those are those are manually drawn, as I say, and I want to see the reaction of those red, red lines. So, by using a regular divergence we, and the candlestick patterns around the uh, red levels, around the big, big important resistance and supports, we can trade counter trend trade with early entry. So. We are not picking tops and bottoms, so I'm not talking about uh, randomly trading every every big level. First, we need the the confirmation. After the confirmation has been made, we go in our early entry. So it can be done by price action candlestick patterns, or it can be done by by Bollinger Bands and divergence. If you use patterns to trade counter trend you will get into a late entry. We won't talk about those late entries, you know already how to trade chart patterns, but I wanted you to know how to trade counter trend using those two simple strategies. For those strategies you need to have self-confidence, 
you need to know what you are doing and you need to have a practice. So, if you want to practice it, be my guest. Use it at your own discretion and I would, I would like to know your, your, how you advance. I think that, that uh, by using these, these two strategies, your uh, diversification in a trading environment will be much higher. So basically, uh, again, and just, just to repeat myself, by using a regular divergence and by using candlestick patterns with Bollinger and Bands, we get into earliest entry possible. By using chart patterns, we get into a late entry, which can be maybe, um, uh, which, which has a more, more confirmation, but the profits are not that big as by using those two examples. Do you have anything to add, Chris? No, that, that's absolutely perfect, in fact. I think I still have something regarding, um, let's see, pin bars maybe, that's also one way. I'll put the microphone a bit closer, I think. Pin bars uh, as well, that's one way of identifying where we could get a rejection. For example, a daily uh, candle or four-hour candle especially, those pin bars definitely tend to relay reliable information regarding um, rejections. So, for example, the open of the next four-hour daily candle and uh, the stop loss above the high or low of that candle, the opposite, opposite of the direction you're looking for, of course, would be the entry method. And uh, the target could be, for example, the next support of resistance or the 20 EMA, for example, which are relatively conservative, the targets for this retracement. And even if the trend were to continue at those spots, you could lock in your profit. Now, the pin bar on a four-hour chart, I mean, I would definitely, you would definitely have to see uh, at least six of those candles go in one shot so that you're not picking every pin bar necessarily. Uh, I would definitely recommend something of, um, especially the four hour world where you have some distance traveled and then maybe here you see a pin bar for example. All right. Now you could take it upon the open or even wait for a retracement, but that retracement sometimes doesn't happen. The other option would be to enter upon the break of the low for example targeting that 20 EMA that may be somewhere around that area. Something like that. Okay. Um, fib retracements, those are also potential targets as well. Uh, if you were to, for example, monitor on a lower time frame, you're looking for a specific area uh, to turn and you're looking for a first momentum or some first confirmation on a lower time frame, a first movement on a five minute chart, and the first hook back on the five minute charts, for example. Uh, but then you would probably want to target a bigger uh, targets. The candlestick patterns that uh, Tanatala just talked about as well, and you could use trend channels uh, for targets or Bollinger Bands, in fact. You could look at chart patterns as well. Uh, now, some things that you could look at, for example, this is a four hour chart. Definitely, for example, a double bottom with divergence Right, that would be an indication, and the candlestick following candlestick pattern. The divergence here, followed by the candlestick pattern. But also the fact that we've had an impulse here and slowly moving up, indicating maybe the space for one more fall. Then a candlestick pattern here, indicating that maybe that downside is over, and we're getting to the upside. And the pin bar way at the top here and the impulse down followed by a slow move up correction and here a candlestick pattern for more downside. So that's how you can look at a chart and find a lot of information. Uh, although the four hour chart is a slow chart, uh, it, it does give some good clues. Some other things you can look at that um, might support the counter trend trading as well. From a, from a high level point of view, you could look at, uh, for example, identifying an impulse. Impulse is just the speed of price action, the angle of price action. If price action is moving like this at an 80 or 70 percent angle, a degree angle, that's impulsive. If price is moving like this, that's more like a uh, yeah, what, 30, 20 percent angle, degree angle. That is not impulsive. So impulse, correction, impulse. The safest in that regard is the next impulse because you have already impulse, you have a slow up move, the next one is with that regard um, a bit safer than catching this one, 
That's what um, Tavantel also said, that the later entry has higher odds but less reward potential. Now you do want to do it in a spot where you expect a bigger reversal because that slow upside can turn in an uptrend as well. So something to be aware of. In added wave terms, basically counter trend trades, you're focusing on trading wave A or C, and wave A and C especially can be very impulsive if they're zigzags. For those of you who like added waves, you know when when to trade counter trend in that case. If you don't, let's move on to looking at, for example, divergence. On uh, indeed, as Tonto said, on the chart of the trend definition, on the chart of multiple time frames, or multiple divergence on one time frame, all of these would be supportive of a turnaround. And but sometimes it does take long. If we look at, for example, how slow the pound dollar moved up and before it finally broke the rising wedge, these things take long and uh, don't happen immediately. Of course, the high resistance, major resistance and support levels, and chart patterns like, for example, head and shoulders, double bottom, double top, rising wedge, falling wedges. And of course, the first, one of the first signals, breaking of moving averages, but also trend lines and trend channels. So these are just some extra things that um, besides price action and um, Bollinger Bands, which still until I mentioned, that you might and divergence as well that you might want to incorporate into identifying whether a counter trend trade would make sense. I think this is the euro dollar four hour chart in fact. And we can see the break here of this channel and the blue line and the moving averages and the impulsive fall to the downside. Breaking all the, um, breaking all the uh, support. Basically, catching a trade right in here, you see the reward potential. Catching it up on the uh, break, less and more risk, right? That's the same on the one-hour chart, but the same same scenario. Massive one-hour candle right there. Alrighty, that wraps. We have some questions, in fact. So, but if you have any other questions, please add that to the list that we have here. Uh, we have George asking T how you created those red lines. Well, I created those red lines only by experience. Well, it's screening time. I need to zoom, zoom out on daily or on weekly time frame, and then I need to spot. Uh, I need to spot. Um, how can I say, uh, rejections of those red lines or, or important uh, patterns around those lines. And I also want to see historical buyers, buyers and sellers around those uh, red lines. So that is why you need to zoom out and it's, it's my creation. So it doesn't mean that I'm right, but I, I'm mostly right by using those levels. So I prefer it. So it's, it's, it takes a bit of experience it takes some time to draw it. It takes to spot those reactions, those bounces of those red lines, to see historical buyers and sellers around those lines. So, well, that, that, that's it. That's the answer to your question. By experience, by gaining experience, I think that you will also be able to, to draw it. But you can see it, it, it's almost always 75, 25s, 85s. It's because big banks like those numbers. Do we have any other questions, Chris? Yes, we do. Uh, this MACD is for your members only, question mark? No, this MACD is MACD 2 line. It's a modern MACD. I don't use a standard built-in uh, MT4 MAC MACD because it's not well, for me, it's it's not correct. It's an old MACD, and this MACD two line is a, is a real MACD. It's it's a modern MACD, and I always use it only that. So you can Google it. It's called MACD two line, so you can dow download it for yourself. It's free, of course. MACD two line.
do you, do you have any other questions? Not as yet, so please feel free uh, to ask any questions regarding uh, this counter trend trading. Yes, if you have any Already questions, don't hesitate to ask. Well, maybe we can ask you, how many, um, how many of you would you consider being active in counter trend trading? How many of you actively? And how many, yeah, that's, that's count, or how many don't? So right away, or for yes, actively counter trend, trend trading, and N for no. Yes for counter trend, no if you're avoiding it. We'll do a, a small poll here. So we got three Ys, four Ys, one no. Oh boy, the, 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 the yeses are winning. And the rest seem to be indecisive. I'm not sure. Maybe that's why they joined our webinar <laughs> to, to find out if they want to do it. We got a question here. Um, do you have a way to determine in time when the next high, higher high or lower low will be made like can? I didn't understand the question. So do we have a means or what to, to know when the higher high will take place? What? Yes, indeed. I think that maybe a trend channel could give an idea because in, in fact, that is kind of the angle of of price, or yeah, you have what you have here is an impulse. Price action is traveling at a speed of maybe seventy degrees. Then the correction, the price is traveling at a very show, shallow angle. Maybe what would it be twenty, thirty degrees? Then price bounces off the support again for another impulsive move. So price is moving very fast in that section. But then we have another corrective move. Now the price angle. The angle of the price here in itself varies. The steeper one at 70, the shallow one at 20, but the entire, if you put all those pieces together, and you connect the tops and the bottoms, you get a trend channel, and the trend channel angle is like 40, 45 degrees. Not that the price is traveling at that angle, no, it's the entire movement. So if you piece all those swing highs, swing lows, because that's what they are here, if you take the tops and bottoms like that, these are swing highs, swing lows, and if you put them all together, then you have that trend channel angle at 40, 45 degrees angles. So in a way, if you if you have that trend channel in place, and the price is is moving up and then moves down here, then you can kind of estimate at what time uh, this this high would happen if they would if the price would behave in this channel. When even if the price is here, for example, you would could, could make a rough estimation like that. Let's see, Darshan is asking, guys, it is not true, though, that often there's a lag between a divergence showing and a corresponding follow-through in price action, question mark. It is not true, though. Uh, what is not true? That there is a lag between divergence and price action. There is a lag. Well, uh, yet again, a uh, very strange comment and question. Well, uh, uh, if, you sp if, I, if I understood it correctly, if you spot the divergence, that is after the candle has been closed and the oscillator has made a new high or new low. In this example, a regular, but the second one, we can see the divergence has been spotted after the breakout of the Bollinger Bands to the upside but the oscillator has made a new low, so so basically there 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 isn't a lag. But you you need you know you need to know when to trade it. You need to trade it by confirmation. So you need to zoom into lower time frame and go by MACD or wait for a reversal pattern to appear. So uh, there isn't a lag, but you need you need to to have a confirmation that divergence indeed will be successful.
So is that ah, uh, that's what Darshan says. Yeah, Darshan says the version shows up, but only after a long time. You know, uh, price action confirms that. Indeed, if yeah, yes, indeed, exactly. So you, it's for you, the, the, for you who want to trade counter trend. It's my advice is go for four hour time frame, and then spot the divergence, and then trade it. Four hour time frame is more reliable for intraday trading, more suitable. So spot it on four hour time frame, and then get into the trade. Today we actually, uh, we had an entry order on the Euro Yen to talk about something different, but it missed us by six pips, unfortunately. I think it was bouncing. Well, I don't follow Yen pairs. I don't uh, yeah. follow Yen pairs. I mostly trade those majors, Cable, Aussie, and Euro. Yeah. Well, in fact, I, I, I've been avoiding them as well, but someone was tending that or asking about the Euro Yen, and it looked like a good break. And we're looking for the retracement of and back to 131.18, and it bounced off 31.24, and uh, on its way to target though. But shame, just missed us by six pips there. Otherwise, we were also trading. We were trading indeed. Darshan is mentioning the Euro CAD and Dollar CAD. Those really did well. The CADs and the and the odds this week. Well, I guess there are not really any questions, so maybe we can wrap it up. Well, guys, if you don't have any further questions, well, you need you know what you should aim at. So, my advice is that you trade this way by using Bollinger Bands and uh, pin bars. It, it there are, there are no many trades using those kind of strategy, but uh, they are profitable. So, if you spot a trade, try to place a small order, and you will see you will see how it good it can be. So uh, feel free to ask any questions also on my blog on Spiders Den or uh, maybe next time on our next webinar. Until then, have a good time, many green pips, and don't forget to like us on Facebook. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone, and see you in a few days again. Yes, exactly, because on uh, Monday we have a webinar with the Delonta Line. Of course, Tuesday we'll be back with uh, live trading as well in the morning UK time. So uh, thank you all as well, and uh, oh, went a bit too far. Have a great rest of the trading week, and see you all soon. Cheers. Cheers. Be organized.